I'm Joe Haddo and this is our series of interviews with the Theakston's Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year Award, Long List Ease. Produced and curated by Harrogate International Festivals in partnership with Theakston's Old Peculiar, WH Smith and The Express and it's great to have you with us. Today I'm joined by one of the world's leading thriller writers. His books have sold over 100 million copies worldwide, winning countless awards and the odd screen adaptation along the way. Here to talk more about his most recent Jack Reacher novel, I'm thrilled to welcome Lee Child. Hello. Hello, Joe. How are you? Very well, thank you, and all the better for seeing you. Yeah, it's a shame we're not uh, together in the bar in Harrogate, but uh, this is a very weird year, isn't it? It certainly is, and yeah. I've been saying to yeah, pretty much everyone that I've spoken to, we've all we've all said the same thing. Oh, you know, in in a month or so, we would have been stood at that bar enjoying a drink and catching up, but it's not to be, is it? <laughs> it's not, and that's a real shame because, you know, obviously the prize is going ahead and that means a lot, but uh, it's really about getting together and meeting people, the fun of it, catching up on the yeah. gossip, seeing who's been good and who's been bad. Uh, and it's a real, <laughs> real shame we're going to miss that. Yeah, it is. But uh, as I've also said, we're going to have to make up for it next year when hopefully we will be there. You bet, yeah, you bet. And how is, uh, how is New York? I'm actually in Wyoming. Uh, uh, ah. We have a place up in the uh, Rocky Mountains, which is, uh, I feel bad for quitting New York, you know, but it was chaos there. And this place is so much easier to isolate. I mean, it's isolated at the best of times. <laughs> uh, Wyoming is the most incredible place. It's... Uh, as a state, it's larger than the United Kingdom uh, physically. And it has the wow. population of Leicester sort of thinly spread across it. Uh, not the exact people from Leicester, but the same number. And uh, it means that you never see anybody. Even when you want to, you never see anybody. <laughs> so uh, this is the ideal place to be right now. It really, do, it really does sound like it. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, New, York, New York was going through and probably still is from... Uh, some pretty tough stuff there. So yeah, good, yeah. good to be out of it. And I'm sure uh, many of us would want to be where you are. Um, let's talk about the book then and congratulations on, on the long listing for the prize. Thank you. Um, we're, talk we're talking about Blue Moon. It's the latest Jack Reacher. Another absolute cracker. I couldn't put it, put it down, Lee. Um, and the latest adventure all begins on a bus in a sort of nondescript town. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what happens to Jack and the opening of the novel and how it unfolds? Well, it's, it starts the way that I live. You know, I'd love to just hang out and watch people. And you, you know, in real life, I can't see, I, I can't say that I've ever seen anything like super dramatic, but you see a, a, a hundred little tiny details all around you all the time. So the idea is Ruth is on the bus, it's not important. He's going nowhere in particular. And he's idly looking around at the other passengers and there's a guy across the aisle, one row ahead, who is an old guy, uh, fast asleep, he's falling asleep. And we've all seen that, you know, the head hanging down. And uh, the only thing that's interesting about him, sticking out of his jacket pocket is a thick envelope and it's a bank envelope. Reacher has seen such things before. He knows what, what it is and he knows what's in it. Uh, it. You know, it depends whether it's $20 bills or $100 bills, but there's a thick wad of bills in this envelope. And uh, the guys are sleeping, and they're kind of visible. So Richard keeps half an eye on it, and the problem is the guy in front of Richard is also keeping half an eye on it. Not a very nice looking guy. And he's clearly thinking, how do I get that envelope? And Rich is thinking, I'm watching this guy thinking how to get the envelope. Uh, and that's where it starts. The, the old guy wakes up, gets off the bus, and the young guy follows him. And so Richard follows both of them. And that's how I write. You know, that was the first scene for me. I just thought, yeah, that's, you know, that'll, there'll be some meat in that later. <laughs> so uh, Richard gets off the bus and off we go. And we end up actually, uh, we end up with a total bloodbath, really. <laughs> That's about yes. the only way of describing it. And, uh, you know, all that any author can ever want is that somebody reads their book and enjoys it. And uh, clearly that's happened. Somebody's enjoyed it enough to, to put it on this long list. But uh, 
I have a sort of feeling that's as far as it will go. I mean, look at this list. It is, that's what I love about the Thigston's Festival is that it is, it is really quite international when you get there. Uh, a lot of the writers are from all around the world. You know, it's not the usual thing where a few people come in from America, but there's people from uh, Australia, New Zealand, the Middle East, there's people from Scandinavia and the attendees as well. It's a really international festival, but I always rely on the uh, Thigston's long list as a kind of guide to what is good this year in British crime fiction, or at least what British readers are thinking of the scene. And uh, so I was thrilled to be nominated, but then I saw who else was nominated, and I'm just thinking, forget it, you know, this, this is, this is, there is so much talent uh, on that list and there are so many good books. Um, you know, look at the names. It is, um, it's nuts. There is a lot of talent there and crime fiction, you know, we celebrate this uh, with the Thigston's Festival. Crime fiction is where it's at. I mean, that's where the talent and the passion is going right now. And you've got to say that 50 years from now, if people want to look back and say what was actually happening in 2020, then the crime novels, I think, are the ones that are going to get read because they're really the last socially realistic novels that are about real things. Mm. Um, and so I think everybody should just buy the long list and that is a good <laughs> introduction to 2020's crime fiction. Um, if, if that's too expensive for you, miss, miss mine out and just check some of these others out because I've read some of them. Uh, a lot of these authors are my friends and uh, I will automatically read their new stuff just to see what they're up to. And it was like getting hit over the head by a baseball bat, you know, time after time because um, some of them you would expect to be good. Uh, you know, we've got Val McDermott on here, Denise Mina. Uh, we've got all the... Brookmeyer is out there. We've got uh, Anne Cleave, you know, all the, all the usual suspects, basically. McKinty is on there, which, uh, you know, for The Chain, and that, that was uh, an amazing book. McHeron is on there. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, I'm thrilled to be on the list. Uh, it's an honor to be in their company, and I know what's going to happen uh, I'm sure I'll get washed up at that point, but whoever wins out of this is going to be a sensational book. <laughs> it certainly will be, and I'm sure they're very thrilled to be alongside you as well, Lee. Um, and you mentioned uh, looking to crime novels, you know, to, to get a sense of what was going on in the world, um, certainly in 2020. And I might be reading too much into this, um, and forgive me if I am, but reading your book, Blue Moon, um, and Reacher starts helping this older couple without giving too much away, who are struggling financially. And part of the reason, or the main reason for, for that is, is due to sort of a healthcare issue, you know, an American healthcare issue. And reading it at this time of the coronavirus, and specifically for me in the UK, knowing that the NHS is being so stretched and everything, it, it just felt really um, pertinent and also made me feel even more lucky for the NHS uh, because of it. And I just wondered if if subconsciously or even consciously you you had put that in there as as a little reference to, you know, the American care system? Uh, well, obviously the book was written before the coronavirus showed up. So it, the actual current crisis was obviously not on my mind. But I was trying to do a kind of two-layer thing here, which was that I needed that old couple that you mentioned. I needed them to be in some kind of trouble. And financial trouble is always good. And so I, I thought, what is a completely normal and plausible reason to have financial problems in America? And that is the health system. If you or a family member gets really sick, then even if you have insurance, even if you have some kind of a plan, you're going to be in debt by at least tens of thousands of dollars if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, every year in America, about a half a million people go bankrupt because of paying the doctor or paying the hospital. And, but I wanted it to an American, to an American audience, that is completely normal. 
they just read the book and they think, oh yeah, okay, they're broke because of health issues. And to them, that is completely normal. So for the American audience, I, I wanted it to be a completely normal, plausible reason for being broke. But for the rest of the world, I just wanted it to be a slight comment. Yeah, you know, it is actually better elsewhere than it is in America for healthcare. Um, you know, I'm not really a big sort of political writer. I don't do rip from the headlines and all that kind of thing. But on the other hand, yeah, I do try and give a little nudge or a point when something is really bad. And, uh, and it is, yeah. And the NHS, by contrast, you know, fun, what a wonderful thing. Everybody suddenly understands it, appreciates it, and, and knows why we have it. And uh, I did a contribution to uh, an NHS sort of charity anthology just the other week. And in fact, I've got to read the audio. Uh, so that's what I'll be oh, doing right. after this. Maybe I'll keep the headphones on so that it sounds <laughs> all that sort of warm radio voice. But, um, but yeah, the NHS, seriously, it, 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 should, it should be celebrated. And I certainly hope that this huge crisis is going to make people put it first again instead of just another public service. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, you've won awards, haven't you, for, for doing broadcasting, so you'll be fine reading that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was never on, you know, on stage or on screen, and I get very, uh, I start out very kind of inhibited, but then after the first paragraph, I just read it and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, we judged this prize together a few years back we when we were curating Harrogate Crime Festival. So how does it feel to be on the other side and you know this is a, an award that you've been long listed for many times before you've won it twice but you know you, you've already alluded to the fact it's an amazing list H how did it feel when you first heard that you were on it again well like i say you know all you can hope for is that somebody enjoys your book and clearly people have so that's a wonderful feeling but then it does bring you into competition with some outrageous talents here <laughs> and so I wonder how they feel about it. You know, in a way, book prizes are a weird thing. You know, this is not the Olympic Games. Uh, it's, it's not clear cut. You know, like if Usain Bolt crosses the finishing line five yards ahead of everybody else, then th that is objective. You know, that's obvious. Uh, books, it's not quite the same. And, uh, you know, I've also judged a lot of prizes. And the long list... Maybe the short list, that's really where the action is. Whoever wins really is fairly arbitrary. But I, I agree, they have selected, you know, myself aside, they have selected some uh, fabulous books here. And what's so lovely about the crime writing community, and in particular Harrogate, which we've already talked about, is that everyone's so supportive of everyone else. So actually, I think there are a lot of authors uh, on that list, yourself included, who are probably thinking, well, I had, I've won it. And actually reading some of these other uh, up and coming names, you know, I think it's I think it's their turn this year. And there's always going to be that sort of support there for them as well. There is. And, uh, you know, it, it regenerates itself over the years. When I started out all those years ago, people were incredibly helpful, supportive, kind, full of goodwill about it. And so, you know, if that is your first introduction to the world of crime fiction, then you, you want to continue it and, and, and become supportive as well. But, I, you know, people assume that one does that out of some kind of nobility or, or because you're a nice guy. And absolutely not. I mean, I'm a reader. First, second and third, I'm a reader. And these people are producing stuff that I just love to read. And so... I mean, I would, if, if Harrogate was happening and I was going, I would love just to bump into any of them and say, you know, that's fantastic. Well done. It, that's a year of their life. Uh, totally worth it. I mean, great stuff. Absolutely. And great that you can say, you know, there are 18 books on this list. You can buy any of them or all of them and read them and you won't be disappointed. So uh, that's, exactly. that's the thing. That is the great thing about the Thiexons Festival, that it is a, every year it's a refresher course, what is hot, what is good about, yeah. about crime fiction in Britain. Uh, now, before you go, there's a couple of things that I've got to ask you about. One is about music, because we often talk about music when we see each other. And the other is about um, Jack Reacher TV series, because we heard that it's been picked up by Amazon, I think, and it's going to be made. Maybe it's in the process of being made. But how involved will, will you be in that? 
Uh, I'll be a little bit more involved than I was uh, with the movies. Uh, strategically with the movies, I thought, you know, just let them get on with it. Uh, but for the television, I'm an executive producer, which is really just about getting more money. But you do have, <laughs> <laughs> you, you do have some uh, input. You know, they call me all the time. So I will take a little bit more uh, direct control over it, especially about the casting, which is, uh, you know, super crucial. And that's what we're doing at the moment. We've been kind of fortunate in the situation in that the stuff that we're dealing with now is very much uh, kind of writer's room based and office based and phone based and all of that. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a, we got the whole first season written. It's all great. We're not quite ready to go into production yet. So we will be in a month or so and hopefully we'll be able to do that. Um, but uh, it's looking good, looking great. And um, the screenplays are terrific. Uh, the casting, as I say, is going to be crucial, but the people that we're looking at right now are fabulous. So uh, I'm very optimistic about it. Yeah, it's really a good feeling. Good. Well, we're excited to see it whenever that may be. And obviously having you involved in the process is a really great thing. Uh, and the other thing uh, I wanted to ask is because about music, the last time we met, I think you just made a record with Naked Blue. And I wondered if you were doing any more music at the moment. I, you know, they want to do another album and I, I love the process and I love the album. Um, but I, I'm sort of conscious of being such an amateur about it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> those guys, <laughs> Naked Blue, have been in the business for 25 years, you know, and it's a tough business to be in. And they have a level of talent that I just don't have in the musical world. So I feel a little bit like, you know, a pesky kid brother saying, please, please, can we do some more? So we'll see. I hope so. Because, I, I mean, I love it and I'm proud of the album. It's, uh, I listen to it often and it's really good fun. Yeah, it's great. And, you know, I remember when you gave it to me, I put it in the, the bag. I think we were at Harrogate and, you know, the rest of the weekend it stayed in there. And then when I got home and I was unpacking, I thought, oh, yeah, there's this. <laughs> put it on and it's, it's a really great lesson. Yeah. It is. I, I was, uh, you know, they did the music. It's the, the musical appeal is not to do with me, but I wrote the words and I, I, it came out brilliantly. Yeah. Um, we should say that Blue Moon is the book we are talking about and it's published by Bantam and it's out now, available from WH Smith. If you haven't read it already and you want to, then you should treat yourself to a copy. And remember that you get to vote for our shortlist. So if you want to see Lee on that list, head over to harrogatetheakstoncrimeaward.com and you can place your vote there. Uh, so it's been lovely talking to you, Lee, as always, and it's a shame we can't meet this year, but hopefully... Uh, next year, and there'll be lots to discuss, including the new Jack Ritchie TV series. You bet. See you then. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.